Hi everyone and welcome to another chat with Deb. So today I'm going to show you a very clever and useful app for collecting responses from your students in your classroom. So let me tell you a little story. Not too long ago our district had several servers go out which basically meant we did not have internet access for our students. And it just so happens that this took place during finals week. So I had several teachers coming to me saying my finals in the form of a Google form. What can I do? My students don't have internet access and so what can I do to have them take this quiz that's basically online? Well, I wish I would have known about the app I'm going to show you today called Quick Key. It could have easily been our solution to help these teachers when they did not have internet access for their students. So do you know what this is a picture of that I have here on my screen? This is called a Scantron machine. Some of you who have been teaching for quite a while might remember these, where the students fill bubbles on a bubble sheet, and then you run the sheets through the Scantron machine, and it automatically grades it for you. Well, the app I'm going to show you today is like the digital version of a Scantron machine. We all know that Scantron machines are not very popular anymore, and this app that I'm going to show you today is not only less expensive, it's actually free to use, and QuickKey is actually a pretty innovative app for scanning student filled in bubble sheets with either an iPad or an iPhone. Well here I am on the Quick Keys website and we all know in this digital age of formative and summative assessment that teachers know it's good practice to use data to drive their instruction in the classroom. So Quick Key is going to make it very easy to quickly scan student responses off a bubble sheet and collect the results and allow you to print out reports. As a matter of fact, a teacher can actually scan an entire class in under two minutes. So we're going to take a look at this app. The first thing you would want to do is sign up for a free account. When you're here on the site, you might also watch this minute movie that explains quite well how the Quick Key app works. And you can scroll down to get the app and download it on your iPhone or iPad. You can also scroll and get more information from the site and hear testimonials and additional videos. Once you've signed up for your free account, you'll notice on the site there are three tabs, create a quiz, create a course, and create a student. The most logical thing to do first is to actually create a course. So you'll want to name that course after your different classes that you teach. So if you're an elementary teacher, you might call it One Course Science, Social Studies, Literacy. If you're a high school teacher, obviously you might call it U.S. History First Hour, U.S. History Second Hour, depending on what you teach. So I've created my course called Geometry First Hour. At first you will not have any students. I have a few students because I've actually entered a few, but you'll just get your course in there and hit Save Course. Once you've created a course, I would then go to the Students tab to create students or add students. Now I have a few options here when you go to the Students tab, and you can see I already have a few in here. But when you're going to actually add a new student, you could click this New Student and do it manually. Another option is right over here on the left you have a Import Students and Courses, and you could actually download their spreadsheet template for Excel or CSV files and upload a lot of students all at once. This would save you a lot of time. Uh, most of the time, if you have a student information system, like for example, our district uses Infinite Campus, you'd be able to download a CVS file and then upload it right into QuickKey. And like I said, that would save you a lot of time. I do not have a CSV file right now. I'm just going to add a student manually. So once in here, I'm gonna click on New Student and I'm going to actually make my husband my new student. <laughs> you don't have to give an email address if you don't want to. You do want to give a student ID. If you don't put a student ID in, QuickKey will just generate student IDs for you. The students use their ID when they take a quiz in the bubbles to identify who they are. And I do not need an external ID, although you could use one if you wanted to. At this time, I've already created my courses. I have my geometry course right here, so I can actually click and add my student Tim right to that course. I can also add him to my US history course if that were another course that I taught. And then I just click on create student. All right, now it's time to create your quiz. Once you're in here, you can simply click on new advanced quiz. And from here, I can give my quiz a name. Next, I can tell which classes will actually take this quiz. So I can select my classes here and I could say geometry and I could add my U.S. history students too. I know that doesn't make sense, but you get the idea if it was geometry first hour, second hour, third hour, etc. I could add all the classes I need that can take this quiz, and then I can hit on create quiz. From here I can add a question. One of the features I really, really like is that you can copy and paste 
your questions and answers in if you want to. You also, which I love, can add an image. This is extremely helpful if you have something like geometry where you need an actual diagram. So I'm going to put this picture in here for my students to refer to. So now I've written my explanation and question. I have my image and I've put in my choices. You could just eliminate and have as many choices as you want. You could just say, I'm only going to have three choices and just tell your students D and E aren't an option on the bubble sheet. But I fill them all in and lastly I just need to click here and identify which is the correct answer. And now I'm just going to hit save question. And I can go ahead and add another question and add as many as I want. I believe the bubble sheet holds up to 30 questions. Now in the case of the teachers I work with, they already had a Google Form quiz made up. So what I would have done when the internet went down was print off that Google Form because Google Forms print off beautifully for a quiz. And I would have had the print off for the students. And then rather than creating questions and answers in QuickKey, which would take up some time, I would just simply have put in question one. And then for the answers, I would have just put in the letters. And then I would have looked at my Google Form to see which one would be the correct answer for question one and mark the correct answer and then I would have saved the question. Then I very simply could add a new question, question two, and from there I can again just put in my choices and mark the correct choice and move on. This would have been very quick. I could have had the Google Form questions with the bubble sheet and yet with my correct answers marked in quick key it would score it for me. So that would have been a great solution for us. If I click right here on Save and Preview, it will show me exactly how this question is going to appear. And so this is my whole quiz. I've only made one question so far. But you can see how nice it's going to print off. Before you print, you have three check boxes to consider. The first one is to leave space under each question for students to show work if it's needed. The next one is to display your questions and images under the question text, just like I've done here. If I uncheck this, you can see then the image is not displayed. And lastly, do you want to have the answers bold for an answer sheet? If you're giving this quiz to students, you would not want that. You would definitely don't want to tell your students what the correct answers are. To show this a little better, let me show you a different quiz that I made for U.S. History. So here's my U.S. History quiz on U.S. Presidents. And as you can see here, I have space under each question. I really don't need that. The students don't need workspace. So I'm just going to untoggle that. And you can see now there's no space between the questions. I do not have images, so I don't have to worry about that. And I do not want to bold the answers. I might do that for myself, but not for the student quiz. So now this is what the student quiz will look like. And from here, I can simply print off this quiz to, to a printer to distribute to the students. At that point, the students will need a bubble sheet to fill in. So if you go over on the left-hand side to get set up, right here is Download New Quick Ticket. And this is what the bubble sheet's going to look like. The students will put in their ID number that's been assigned to them. They can also write their name in this box. And then they can fill in the bubbles as they take the quiz. So I've actually printed off a bubble sheet, which you can see right here, and filled one in. And I'm going to show you next how you would scan it. Alright, so here I am on my iPad. You could also use an iPhone. Um, right now this app is only available for iOS. I'm going to click on the quick keys, which you can see is right here. So I'm going to tap that and open up the app. I'm going to click on quizzes. So I'm going to hit the scan button. From here, I'm going to find the bubble sheet that Tim filled in. What you want to do is hover over those bubbles with your camera and scan. And now you can see that Tim Norton got 4 out of 5 correct or an 80%. Those results automatically sync with the website. And I can also click right over here on the app where it says results. And I can see the scores of everybody who's taken this quiz. I can also look at it by question or by student. I can also run reports, which I really like. And I usually do this on the website, so I'm going to show you that in just a second here. One of the things you can do then, once you've given some quizzes, is run reports. And they give you four different choices of types of reports. So I've looked at the different four different types. Uh, survey doesn't help me much with scores, but the itemization and score sheet are great. If at any time you're finding you need help with this app, you can go over here to the Support tab and ask a question. And I've noticed just from the Quick Key blog, as well as from watching some of their testimonial videos, that the support is excellent on the site and you will get help quickly. So that's really great. Well, I hope that you give the Quick Key app a look and maybe you'll find it to be a good alternative for either replacing your costly Scantron machine or possibly a great alternative if you're not able to have internet at some point in time. Well, until next time, I hope you're all doing well and we'll chat again soon. Bye everyone!